When I was working at Google, one of the culture pillars I appreciate the most was the phrase thriving in ambiguity. And the phrase itself feels pretty ambiguous. But what I also learned to appreciate while I was there and in jobs moving forward was that I thrive the most when I have autonomy to get the job done. And I feel like there is a little bit of this in everyone. Like everyone who I've talked to so far in podcast interviews, um, everything I read in like self-development, uh, personal growth books, all has to do with this idea of freedom. And to me, that freedom is really autonomy or how do I creatively problem solve for things, right? I don't want someone telling me exactly every little single step to do. I want some reins on how to solve for it on my own, how to figure things out. Given I might fail and have to try again, but at least I can take some risks, some calculated risks that gives me that personal experience that I can learn and grow from, right? So that's what this episode is about. What does it mean to thrive in ambiguity? And how do you do this for yourself? And it's not just a work thing, but really it's a life thing because who really has all their life figured out? I am Leah Fetterhoff, a user experience designer, writer, and life strategist, and I want to inspire you to thrive in work and life. So how do you make good decisions when you have a little bit of data, and how do you figure things out when no one has laid out a path for you, right? We go through this when we're trying to figure out our major in college, or trying to figure out what we want to do for our job or where do we want to live or anything from like I don't know like figuring out what's your favorite food to eat right like all of this is personal preference is what feels aligning what do you value what's important to you how would you spend a free day with nothing to do right that's ambiguity no one's telling you exactly what to do Right? And some people are scared of it, and some people just like go all in and figure it out. And it's not to say, like, now that you're thriving in ambiguity, and that's not to say if you thrive in ambiguity, it's the only way to live. But I believe everyone benefits for having some level of comfort with ambiguity. And why that is, is because we're all going to face it at some point in our lives. And these are the moments that you need to take action or make a risk or decide something, right? And there will never be one right answer. Whenever you're encountered with, do I say yes or no to this thing? Or can I really meet this New Year's resolution? Or do I want to volunteer for this? fill in the blank, uh, cause, or step up, or lean back, right? No one's going to decide all of that for you. And you don't want to mindlessly give a response either. Otherwise, that leads to overextending yourself, burning out, or waking up years from now and saying, why did I say yes to all of these things, right? Like, who am I really? How do you avoid a midlife crisis, (laughs) right? I don't know, but what I have learned over time is that the more I reflect, give myself time and space to think and say, hold on, I can't answer that yet, let me get back to you, let me sleep on it, right? Let me draw a pros and cons list. What is more important to me at that time? What is more important to me long term? And how do I make sure I'm getting enough of doing whatever it is, that it will fill me with energy instead of deplete me. Because, right, that's the purpose of self-care and really understanding what fills you up, is that only then will you be able to serve other people, your family, 
uh, your friends, build up other relationships? How do you bring in the energy you want to be surrounded by in your life if that's not what you're putting out there in the first place? So it comes back to thriving in ambiguity. Not that you have to run to every ambiguous situation ever, but with a combination of knowing who you are, what feels authentic to you, what feels like an opportunity for growth, and what is a calculated risk you can take to get to that vision of your life, which is what we talked about last week. There is going to be some playing in the space of ambiguity, of a blank canvas, a blank day, like even a blank minute or an hour. Like, what is it you want to do instead of writing down the to-do list, checking things off mindlessly? How about put something up there that does light you up, that does give you more energy? There's a Steve Jobs quote that says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. Hindsight's 2020. I feel that a lot of the decisions I've made looking back, because I had a goal of working flexibly, because I knew I wanted to live in a place where my kids could grow up uh, with the same group of friends in the same school system you know, until they graduate college, like I did. I had some of these bits and pieces of what I wanted for my life vision, for my family vision. And how I saw it realized was one decision at a time or one step. There were a few years I was making a commute, you know, to and from work, putting kids in daycare. And I knew my end goal was to get a flexible job. And I've told this story before, but you know, in the context of this thriving with ambiguity, I had a goal in mind. And it's not like, you know, I was going to say like, okay, in 2017, I'm going to do X. In 2018, I'm going to do Y. And, and so on and so forth. But it's like, okay, I'm ready for my next job. Here are some of the constraints or some of the things I'm looking for in that next job. One of them is, can I work flexibly, right? If it's not 100% remote, is it like 50% remote? Can I work from home some days? Is it hybrid, right? Once I had that in my uh, experience, you know, it made it easier to go to the next job and say, hey, look, I was able to, to exceed expectations or succeed here because, uh, you know, despite like having hybrid work or I thrived working from home a few days a week, right? And it proves out like I can work in that environment and it proves to myself too, right? What if I completely hated working remotely, which I don't. Uh, and then it gave me the confidence to also seek more intentionally those types of opportunities until, you know, I'm where I am at now. Uh, working at a fully remote company and thriving in it because it's something that makes me happy, something that I want to do. And I'm curious to like figure out how to do it even better. It's just like that with, you know, like moving to Roseville, which I did a few years ago, right? My husband and I decided that we wanted to move closer to family, somewhere we could afford, somewhere that, you know, the elementary school would be five minutes away right? But we don't specifically say like, we're going to move to Roseville. <laughs> Once again, like if that was part of a vision, that is very prescriptive. And it was more this idea of living in a place we could afford, keep the kids in a school system, you know, throughout the course of, of their lives through high school. And we were able to, you know, explore we checked out different cities, both in California and outside of California. Um, you know, we looked at different neighborhoods and, you know, like there were a lot of things, you know, we went back and forth on and our pros and cons list until we found something that we're, we were ultimately content and happy with. And even like with the small decisions, right? Like, what should I make for dinner? <laughs> Well, it depends. Like, how much money do I want to spend? Can I already utilize what's in my pantry and my fridge? Do I have to go out and do groceries? A lot of this, right? It's, okay, if my goal is to save money, then that's going to be a different set of decision making than if I say my goal is to not have to work, you know, put a lot of active work into preparing a meal for tonight. And if you use that perspective for a lot of things, right, that 
Ultimately, it is thriving in ambiguity. No one's handing you an answer. You're making thoughtful decisions based on aligning yourself to what the end goal is or what you feel is a pretty solid end goal. It's asking questions throughout the way, you know, just what I'm doing here, right? Like, is there enough food in my fridge or pantry to make a meal out of? Does it benefit me if I were to spend an hour or two hours of meal prep versus just going out to a restaurant? What is it that I want to invest in? So those are some tips on how to thrive with ambiguity. And once you start to develop pretty solid solutions or a few paths forward, into realizing, right, whatever problem it is you're trying to solve, then it becomes easier to try out the next step and the next. Say with my, you know, meal prep example, I decide, yes, I just want to use whatever's in the pantry. And then I realize maybe I ran out of eggs, right? Now, like, do I want to go out and buy eggs or do I want to change to a different recipe? And maybe this time I'll gather all the ingredients first before I start, you know, cooking, you know, other parts of the meal. And once again, right, this is what it means to develop that comfort and ambiguity. And what I've learned for next time is if I'm cooking something is to double check if I have all the ingredients before I start. Because particularly for someone type A like me, like it is a big fail to start something and not have enough of those pieces there or have like a core ingredient be gone. I'm sure like for those of you who do cook, maybe I can swap out butter for oil or whatever it is, right? Or I can look up something on what a good substitute is. And there are workarounds too. That's not to say you have to prepare everything in advance, but there are those learning lessons. Next time I know I can substitute this for that. Okay, next time I'm gonna pick a non-cooking example because (laughs) this isn't going the way I wanted, but you get the point, right? Like sometimes these mini decisions are something that you can update. Sometimes these decisions are going to be a little bit bigger than that, right? Like a key ingredient. Like if I don't have spaghetti noodles for spaghetti, then I probably can't make spaghetti unless I decide to invest in making them from scratch or take a trip to the store. At that point, I might just call it quits as long as I'm not really trying to save money and just order it from an Italian restaurant. So once again, thrive in ambiguity, figure out what is in your control, what's not, what is just enough data for you to make helpful decisions about what the next step is until you can get to the outcome you want. And as you get comfortable with problem solving and being able to become aware of this problem solving process over time, you can apply it to so many more things. Once again, once you feel that itch or that something needs to change in your life, start to identify what area it's in. Is it health? Is it finances? Is it relationships? Is it, you know, I feel so isolated or I just need to go out and get more sun or I feel like I haven't been walking around enough today. Whatever that is, right? It doesn't matter how exact or how precise you get at that first pass, but whatever you do next, right? Whatever that small step forward is, it will give you a little bit more clarity and insight into whether that was the right thing to invest in. If it's too broad, you can narrow even further or you switch like, oh, you thought it was a um, social issue. It's more a time issue. So you have to resolve the time issue in order to tackle the social issues, right? I don't have enough time for friends or for volunteering when in fact it's, no, you're spending like 80 hour weeks at work, right? Probably (laughs) working too much. How do you take some of that time back? Becoming a mom, like I became even better at ruthlessly prioritizing my family. Granted, it made it easier to say, no, I have to go. I have to get my kids from daycare. I don't want to pay extra if they're there past six or whatever it is. But it's also even like coming off right off the bat. No, my non-negotiable is I leave at 4.30. I will come in at 7.30. I'm a morning person. Like, are you cool with that? Right? It's like setting those agreements, right? And my first job, I wasn't able to establish those hours. My second job, I was like, yeah, I like this way better. Like 5 p.m. is like way late for me. Like my creativity, my decision making is completely shot by then. I know that about myself and I don't think it's a big ask to adjust those hours. If the company 
couldn't support that, then I would have to question whether I wanted to work there. Same with anything else you come across in life. It's about figuring out where that flexibility lies, what your non-negotiables are, which was also covered in a previous episode, and figuring out where you want to go next. So hope you found this episode helpful. Once again, I foresee more episodes in the future about this concept of thriving with ambiguity because there's a lot to unpack in there. But I believe it is one of the keys as you're starting to execute on a vision or just trying to figure out what it is you actually want in life and figuring out what risks or what bets you feel comfortable enough or feel just a little bit risky enough for you to start pursuing. Anyway, there you have it. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, share with your friends, and also check out the redesignswishy.com website and sign up for my newsletter if you haven't already. Thanks, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. If you enjoyed this, subscribe and share with friends.